Asanteni sana kwa kuwa pamoja nasi kwenye uhusiano wa imani. Obrigado por sintonizar a Conexão da Fé. Gracias por sintonizarnos en la Conexión de Fe. Thank you for tuning in to Faith Connection, where we help you connect to God. Hello, my name is Jim Jorgensen. I'm honored to be able to be here today to preach to you the Word of God. I want to preach this morning, or it's morning where I'm recording this anyhow, whatever time it is where you're listening to it. I want to preach to you concerning some prophecy, Bible prophecy in the next event in God's timetable uh, for this world. Uh, as we think about prophecy, sometimes we think maybe something dull and boring uninteresting, uh, talking about different types and symbols and confusing things. And the uh, study of all prophecy is good. I've studied it all, uh, taught most of it. But uh, today, I want to focus with you on the next event in God's prophetic timetable. And prophecy ought to be exciting. It ought to be exciting for us to, as Christians to know what God has for us and to be able to anticipate the future. Uh, turn your Bibles, if you would, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, where Paul writes, beginning in verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, or who have passed away, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And as you look at those verses and look back uh, here, even uh, the Bible talks in verse 16 about Christ descending uh, from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ are going to rise. Uh, this is the next event in God's timetable uh, for this world. Let's have a word of prayer as we begin. Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd speak to hearts and that you'd move in lives as we preach your inspired, infallible word and the truths we learn from it. Help each of us, uh, everyone hearing this message, to be sure of salvation and that they are on their way to heaven, and help us as Christians to live in light of the day that we'll be standing before you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. The Bible teaches that the next uh, event in God's prophetic timetable is the what we read about here in 1 Thessalonians 4. Uh, Christ will descend into the uh, clouds, won't come all the way to the earth, but we'll hear a trumpet, we'll hear the shout of the archangel, and uh, at that time people who have passed away already, who are in the grave, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 says those who sleep, uh, will be resurrected, their bodies will be resurrected, their souls already in heaven, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them uh, in the air to meet the Lord and uh, will be with the Lord forever. Uh, that's the next event in prophecy. We call it, uh, the theologians for a uh, long, long time now have called that event the rapture, R-A-P-T-U-R-E, the rapture of Christians. Uh, at the rapture, Christians who are alive and remain when Christ returns, if we're alive here on the earth, if that event were to happen today, uh, maybe even before I finish preaching this message, uh, those of us who are born again Christians who've trusted Christ would be immediately changed and caught up uh, in the air to meet the Lord. And uh, we'd be there, we'd be with Him forever. And uh, folks who have passed away over the last centuries, uh, millennia, uh, who've trusted Christ as Savior uh, would be caught up together uh, with us and we'd uh, meet Jesus in the air. We'd be with him forever. Uh, according to the Bible, this could happen at any moment. It's the next event in God's prophetic timetable. There's nothing that has to happen between today and the rapture according to the Word of God. Uh, Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 40, at such time as you think not, 
uh, Christ could return. And uh, you say, well, I don't think he's going to come today. Well, that's when he could come. Paul thought that the return of Christ might come in his lifetime. If you look at verse 15 there in 1 Thessalonians 4, it says, uh, we, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, and that word prevent means precede, uh, them which are asleep. Paul thought that he might be alive when Christ returned. Obviously, it's been a couple thousand years since Paul, or nearly 2,000 years since Paul uh, went on, passed away, went on to heaven. Uh, but Paul said, hey, it could come today. He thought he might be alive when Christ returned. You and I might be alive at the return of Christ. It's the next event in God's prophetic timetable. And I ought to get excited about the fact that I'm going to heaven. And uh, any day, regardless of how difficult the circumstances are here or what I'm going through here, Christ could return. We'd hear the trumpet. We'd be re reunited uh, there in heaven. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and uh, verse 9, Paul writes and says, under the inspiration of the Holy Scripture, Holy Spirit, every word chosen of God, for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, how ye turn, this is a phrase I want to get here, how ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. There in verse 9, it uh, says that God, uh, he turned to God from idols to serve. And so as when somebody gets saved, they're supposed to be serving God. They're supposed to be active, uh, involved, serving God, living a life to serve him and to wait. While we're serving, we're waiting. While we're waiting, we're serving. Uh, we're doing both at the same time. And as you and I serve God today, we ought to be conscious of the fact that Christ could return at any moment. We ought to be serving and waiting, waiting and serving, both at the same time. Uh, the same idea is given uh, in uh, Titus chapter 2, beginning in verse 12, where Paul writes, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, teaching us, that's talking about the grace of God that appeared to all men back earlier in the chapter. The grace of God appeared teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Talking about how we ought to live, but while we're living in this present world, we're to be looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You and I are supposed to live, verse 12, soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, but we're to live looking, verse 13, for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. While we're living, we're to be looking and thinking Christ could come today. I should be looking for his return. Uh, yeah, if you're looking for somebody's return, uh, it changes how you live. It changes how you act. Uh, the rapture or the second coming of Christ, when the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and uh, this mortal flesh then will put on immortality, 1 Corinthians 15, and uh, will become immortal and will be joined together to serve Christ forever uh, there in heaven. Uh, that'll be exciting. Some people say, well, I don't know, I get scared thinking about that. Why? It'll be tremendous when we're in heaven. You think about heaven, what a wonderful time it's going to be. I, I have five things that start with R that I get excited about when I think of heaven. I think, number one, there'll be a reunion. I enjoy reunions. I enjoy getting together with family. I enjoy getting together with old friends. Heaven's going to be the greatest reunion of all. We'll join together there around the throne of God and be able to serve him, be able to serve him, be able to see him. Uh, there'll be a reunion, first of all, with Christ. I've served him now for decades, a long time. I've been serving Jesus. I've read his word. I've prayed to him. He's answered prayers, but I've never seen him. I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus. And he won't be an effeminate, long-haired uh, fella. He, he'll be a, the, the son of God. I'm looking forward to seeing my Savior. There'll be a reunion when I get to heaven uh, with my Savior. Not only that, there'll be a reunion with loved ones. 
my dad passed away uh, almost, uh, well, 33 years ago now. It'll be in October. And uh, I love him. I miss him. I think about him often. I'm looking forward to seeing and uh, being there on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, heaven will be wonderful. I'm looking forward to seeing my dear mother. Handed me a King James Bible as a lad, said, this is the inspired, infallible Word of God. Saintly Christian, been in heaven now for uh, more than 10 years. I'm looking forward to seeing her. I'm looking forward to seeing friends. I'm looking forward to seeing other loved ones. I'm looking forward to seeing pastors and teachers who, as Christians, invested in training me. I'm looking forward. Heaven will be a reunion with people. Uh, it'll be tremendous. Again, sometimes I've been to school reunions. I've been to uh, class reunions. I've been to family reunions. Heaven will be the best reunion ever. And we'll be with Jesus. We'll be with loved ones. Uh, there'll be, I mean, it'll be a great time. Heaven will be a reunion. Heaven will be, uh, there'll be rewards when we get to heaven. There'll be crowns that we'll receive that we can cast at Jesus' feet. I'm looking forward uh, to receiving some rewards for the things done here. And because when I receive those rewards, I'll be able to give them back to Christ. Sometimes rewards don't come here, but they will come in heaven. Heaven will be a time of reunion. Heaven will be a time of rewards. Heaven will be a time of removal of sin. I'm, I, you know, sin frustrates me. As a Christian, probably the biggest frustration I have in life is sin. Sin within my own life, sin that I see around me, sin that messes up other people's lives. But when I get to heaven, the struggle with this old flesh will be gone. I won't have to struggle with sin anymore, won't deal with it anymore. Paul writes in Romans about the old wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Christ will when, I, when he comes back at his return. And uh, even the apostle Paul wrote and said, things that I would not, that I do. That's probably happened to you sometimes. I didn't want to do that, but I did it anyhow. It happens to me, it happens to all of us. Either you fight sin in your life, or you just give in to it because I know between the world and the flesh and the devil, all of us get tempted according to the word of God. And so the struggle with sin in my life, when Jesus comes uh, and, I get, and we're in heaven together, that struggle be gone. There'll be a reunion with Christ, be a reunion with loved ones. There'll be rewards. There'll be removal of sin in my own life. There'll be removal of sin around me. I won't have to uh, change the channel on the TV uh, because uh, some dirty liquor ad is on or because some uh, indecency or immodesty or immorality is being promoted. I won't have to drive by billboards where they're promoting alcohol and other things that you know, we have no business getting involved with as Christians. I won't have to. Sin will be gone. I'll be able to be there and rejoice. There won't be any more rock music. There won't be any more. Uh, heaven is going to be a wonderful place. Somebody said, well, I don't know. I'm getting afraid and uh, thinking that Jesus might come. It ought to be exciting, not scary, to think about the fact that Jesus could come today. There'll be a reunion. There'll be rewards. There'll be removal of sin. There'll be rest. Sometimes in this life, things get busy and hectic. The mother who has the daily chores and the diapers to change and the meals to cook and the food to prepare and the church work to do and the pastor with the burdens and cares of this life and uh, his own family and the burdens and cares of the church. There'll be rest in heaven. There'll be time to sit down and relax. I'm looking forward to a time of rest in heaven. There'll be reunions and rewards and removal of sin and rest. And then finally, when I get to heaven, there'll be rejoicing. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be a glad reunion. Again, think of the happiest family reunion you could have here and multiply it by a thousand or a million. Heaven will be that good or better. 
It'll be a great place. It'll be a time of rejoicing as we sing praise to God. It'll be a time of rejoicing as we get to meet others uh, that have invested in us. It'll be a time of rejoicing as we get to meet people about whom we've read or heard, the saints of the Bible and uh, the apostle Paul and Peter and James and, and uh, so many. Heaven will be a wonderful time. And you know, that could come for us at any moment because uh, Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 4 uh, that uh, you know, it, it could happen today. We which are alive and remain, Paul thought it might happen during his lifetime. 1 Thessalonians 1, he says, serve and wait. While you're serving, wait for his return. While you're waiting, keep serving. Don't stop serving and say, well, I'm just going to sit and do nothing because Christ could come today. No, while I'm waiting, I'm supposed to be active serving. And while I'm serving, I'm supposed to be waiting. I'm supposed to be serving with his return in mind. I'm supposed to live looking. Uh, Titus chapter 2 says, I'm supposed to live looking for the return of Christ because, and when he comes, it'll be a tremendous time. There'll be reunion. There'll be rewards. There'll be removal of sin. There'll be rest. There'll be rejoicing. Look, since I know he's coming, I don't know when. I don't mean to be saying that I think he's coming today. Nobody can set a date. There have been people through the ages who have set different dates. Uh, I recall turning on uh, the news one morning uh, a couple of years ago, I think, and uh, the news commentator is saying, well, we're still here. Somebody had set a date for the end of the world and uh, got quite a bit of promotion. And the news commentator said, well, uh, we're still reporting on that story, but it didn't happen. No, at such time as you think not, Luke 1240, Nobody knows the day or the hour when he's coming back. And it may come today, and I should live in anticipation of the fact that Christ could come today, but it may not be for another hundred years or another thousand years. This old body may die and get put in the grave. My soul, when that happens, my soul and your soul, if you're saved, will go immediately to heaven when you die. And then your body would wait in the, in the grave for the resurrection uh, that would happen when Christ returns at, again, what we call the rapture. Now, since I know Christ is coming, it could be today, could be next week, could be a thousand years from now. I don't know. I kind of think it's coming. he's coming pretty soon, but I don't know. And, uh, but in light of the fact that he is coming, I want it, number one, I want to be sure I'm saved. I want to know for sure when that trumpet sounds that I'm going up. Have you trusted Christ as your Savior? Do you know if your body were to die today or if that trumpet were to sound that you would be on your way to heaven? Or do you wonder about it sometimes? And I'll come back and talk about that a little bit more uh, here at the end of the message. But I want to, number one, be sure that I'm saved. Number two, I want to do all I can to try to win others to Christ. The uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, Paul writes and talks about the fact that he is a debtor both to the Jew and to the Gentile uh, and to everybody in the world to preach the gospel to them because he knows, he says, I am debtor both to the Greeks and the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. So as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel. And uh, that's what we ought to do. I want to spend my time preaching the gospel in light of the fact that Christ would return. Uh, this building, you know, if you passed by a house, and you saw it on fire, you'd run up. I uh, talked to a man a few years ago, said that uh, his house had been destroyed. He was alone in the house early in the morning, heard somebody banging on the front door, couldn't figure out why, went to the front door, and it was his neighbor banging on the door saying, your house is on fire, there's smoke coming out of it, you need to get out of there. Any of us would have done the same thing to warn somebody to get out of the house. This world is going up in flames. You want to be sure you're saved. You want to live for God. Uh, you want to try to uh, help others to know that they're saved. You and ought to, I ought to spend our time trying to win others to Christ and trying to get them to trust Christ as Savior because this world is going to be destroyed and uh, death is going to come to all. This isn't it. This is not eternity. Somebody says, well, I think it's heaven on earth. Somebody else says, I think it's hell on earth. No, heaven and hell are real places somewhere else. 
uh, often will spend eternity in one or the other. Since I know I'm saved, I ought to spend my time trying to win others to Christ. Uh, I ought to be sure I'm saved. I ought to try and win others to Christ. I ought to live a clean, separated life. 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3 talks about every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. And uh, as uh, I think about the return of Christ, I ought to try and live a life dedicated to serving God. I want to keep my life clean and pure, just as I would if uh, I knew somebody, authority or a leader or my parents might walk into the room at any time. I want to live my life realizing that Jesus could return at any time. Number four, I want to live for eternal things. Uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 3 and uh, verse 10, uh, Paul writes and uh, to the uh, or not Paul, Peter writes and says, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Yo, you don't expect it. Nobody expects a thief. Nobody knows when the thief is coming. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, uh, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Uh, seeing then that all these things that you see around you, all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? The things that we see here are going to be dissolved. Nevertheless, verse 13, skipping a verse for the sake of time. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And verse 14, wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent. Look, these things back in verse uh, 11 are going to be destroyed, but such things as are in heaven, the eternal things are going to last forever. You and I ought to live for, not for these things that we see here in this earth, because they're going to be destroyed. They're going up and <laughs> it won't matter how much money you have in a bank. It won't matter what kind of house you live in. It won't matter what kind of car you drive. It won't, none of those things, they're all going to be destroyed. We ought to live not for these things. Somebody says, oh, you live for things that aren't real. No, you live for eternal things. We all ought to live for things, but not these things as are here on this earth, but we ought to live for such things, verse 14, as are in heaven, as are eternal. We want to live for things that are eternal and live with eternity's values in view and uh, spend our life living for things that are going to matter in light of eternity. Again, let me take a few minutes here and try and draw some uh, applications. Number one, uh, you and I, you ought to be sure and I ought to be sure that I'm saved. Christ is coming. When he comes again, everybody who's trusted Christ as Savior is going to go up in the rapture. We'll rise together in the clouds to meet him in the air and we'll be there in, the, in heaven with him forever. Not everybody on earth is going. It won't depend on how well you've lived, how nice you've been. It's going to depend on one thing. What have you done with Jesus? The Bible teaches very clearly all of us are sinners. Most of us don't even have to read the Bible to know that we're sinners. We know we don't live a perfect life. I know that. You undoubtedly know that. Because we've sinned according to the Word of God, the Bible says there's a penalty on sin. Romans 6, 23 says the wages of sin is death. Wages what you earn for what you do. And so according to the word of God, because I've sinned, I've earned death. Part of that is physical death. More than that, it's spiritual death. And so according to the Bible, when I die, when you die, if we get what we have coming to us, none of us are going to heaven. We'd all wind up in hell because the wages of sin is death and I've sinned. But the Bible tells me God loves me, and he wants me to go to heaven. So Romans 5, 8, Bible says that God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ never sinned. He didn't have any sins to die for, but he died for mine, for yours, for everybody else's. Be like if I did wrong, and somebody else went to jail to pay that price. Jesus did better than go to jail for me or pay a fine. He died for me. He loved me that much. 
He loves you that much. I've sinned. I deserve to die and wind up in hell, but Christ died to pay for that sin. Because he did, God offers me a gift. Romans 6, 23 first starts off by saying the wages of sin is death. But that verse goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Gifts are different than wages. Wages you earn. Gifts are free. It can't be both. Some would say, well, you have to trust Christ and work. Well, if you have to work some, it isn't a gift. Somebody says, I'll give you $10 if you do this task for me. That isn't a gift. Those are wages. God offers us a gift of eternal life. And uh, in order for a gift to be ours, we have to accept it. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The Bible tells us how to accept that gift of eternal life in Romans 10, 13, where it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can you point to a time in your life when you say, I know I called on Jesus as my Savior. I put my trust in Him. If you haven't, you ought to do that today. You could bow your head briefly and uh, pray to God, say these words to God as if you were talking to somebody beside you right now. Uh, bow your, you could bow your head and say, Dear God, I know I've sinned. I know I don't deserve to go to heaven. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I trust in Him and His death as the payment for my sin and call on Him to be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that, you ought to let somebody know as they give you information here at the end of the broadcast. You want to make sure you're saved. You want to have trusted Christ as your Savior so that you can go up and be with Christ when He returns there in the rapture. Those that are left here on earth will go through a terrible time of torment and uh, different problems. And uh, so, uh, number one, as an application, you want to make sure you're saved. Secondly, you should try to win others to Christ. You ought to try and share the gospel message with other people. You ought to invite them to church. You ought to get them to watch this broadcast or uh, things like that that would help them, enable them uh, to trust Christ as Savior, give them the knowledge to do that. You want to make sure you're saved. You want to help win other, try to win others to Christ. And then finally, let me remind you that heaven and hell are real. Heaven is a real place. I mean, it's a place like your city is a place, only it's a wonderful place. I'm looking forward to it. There are streets of gold, and gates of pearl, and, I mean, mansions, dwelling places where I'll be able to live forever. Heaven is a wonderful place. There will be reunion and rejoicing and reward and removal of sin and rest. And again, great rejoicing. But just as heaven is real, so is hell. And hell is a place of terrible torment. I want to spend my life living for eternal things. And I want to challenge you today to do the same thing. You know, it, again, it's not about the house, the car, the bank account. It's about What's going to have value in eternity? Make a difference. Spend your life living for eternal things. Thank you for tuning in to Faith Connection, where we help you connect to God.